I'm Shere Khan, I'm a PhD student. Uh, my advisor is Edith, who is finally here. So we can start. So this is a joint work with uh, Edith and Alexander Spiegelman, and it was accepted this last year. Let me just, okay. So let's start off with a bit of motivation. You all know consensus, you all know uh, why it's, what it's good for, and it's used in many large scale systems. For example, DM or Libra and the Hyperledger Algorand and so on and so on. And it motivates both asynchrony and low communication complexity. And we all know from FLP result that in order to make some kind of algorithm work in asynchrony, we must settle on a randomized consensus. Same goes for the low communication complexity. We have to have and write to clover bound, state that it must have a quadratic number of messages. So we know that we must settle on a randomized algorithm, and uh, this is exactly what we do. And what uh, our main result is that we present the first subquadratic Byzantine agreement with high probability. So what does it mean? Our algorithm has uh, O tilde of n words. It works in a constant expected time. It only solves binary consensus, meaning, again, that we must decide either uh, 0 or 1, for example. And uh, unlike previous works, like most previous works, also our safety guarantees are with high probability, meaning that the probability tends to one as n goes to infinity, the number of processes. We are not the first to solve subquadratic consensus. However, uh, we are the first to solve it in an asynchronous setting. So we have King and Isaya, they were the first to do it in synchronous, and Algorand did it also in synchronous and in eventual synchrony model. So let's talk a bit about our model. I already mentioned it is asynchronous. Uh, this is great. We have n processes in the permission settings. And up to uh, almost a third can be of the processes can be uh, Byzantine, where n is approximately uh, 4.5. Okay, so this uh, number, weird number, stems from uh, some equation of probability that must be a positive one. Also, we assume a trusted PKI, so each process is uh, equipped by a private key and a public key that was dealt to him in advance. He could not make it up on its own. And uh, there are few recent work who showed that this is uh, indeed necessary, some, some kind of trusted uh, setup. And finally, we have an adaptive adversary, meaning that it can corrupt processes during the execution. However, we limit it in a way uh, that it is called a delay adaptive, we call him. He can use a, a content of a message M to, to decide who to corrupt next, only if M uh, causally precedes another message. He cannot see them and decide the same moment what's going on uh, next. A main tool we are using in our work is a verifiable random function, or a VRF, as I'll refer it. This is a random function that Besides providing some random number, it also provides uh, proof of the number of this random number. You can think of someone uh, randomly picking up a number, but he has a proof that this is indeed the number he got, and he could not choose his own number. So uh, this is where the trusted PKI comes to use. Everyone who wants to obtain this number using the VRF uses his secret key to obtain this number. And all other processes can verify this number using the public key of the same process. And we use this tool in two, uh, in two ways. One is to construct a shared coin. And at first, we'll see this uh, shared coin using VRF as a quadratic number of messages to it. And then we'll turn to a different direction. We'll uh, sample committees using a cryptographic sortition, as sh was shown in Algorand. Uh, and besides choosing the committee, it will help us reduce the number of messages used in the protocol. So let's start off with the shared coin. So what is a shared coin? So a shared coin is a procedure uh, being executed by all processes where we want all of the processes to agree on a bit flip. Okay, so it's similar a bit to consensus, only that uh, we all want to share, to flip a bit together. And effectively, what we're trying to do, we have this uh, local sense of randomness from the VRF, as I said, and we want to make it common. We want uh, all processes to agree on a random value. 
So just a bit of background. We have uh, Mikali's coin from uh, 2017, which is very simple. It works in synchrony. We have one communication round. Each process on the left obtains some random number using a VRF, and it sends it to all other to all other processes. Sorry. Then at the end of the round, each process see all the values he received. He picked the minimum uh, value among them and returned uh, the least significant bit of this value. So in synchronous is quite simple. We know that all correct uh, processes, sorry, all values of correct processes will arrive at the, at the destination, at all the other correct processes, meaning that they all hear the same set of uh, two-third values. And Byzantine uh, values may or may not arrive. In this case, if we all agree on the minimum uh, of the least significant bit of the minimum value, there is a good chance, a chance of over two thirds, that we all hear the same minimum value. As I said, this uh, VRF provides random values, meaning that the adversary cannot choose that the Byzantine process will have this minimum value. So uh, it limits the probability that it will ruin the, the scenario. But, of course, this only works if we have a synchrony and all processes hear from good processes. <coughs> Sorry. So let's try and make it asynchronous. So for the first step, we cannot wait uh, upon a timeout. We must wait for some threshold of messages. So uh, as usual, we'll decide on n minus f. We cannot wait for longer. And in this case, we don't uh, still have this property of hearing from all sets of good processes, because the adversary now has the power to decide the schedule and see, decide who hears from who. So in order to fix this problem, we had another round of uh, sending messages. And in this round, every process send its message, its, uh, its minimum value, to all other processes. Then again, they all decide upon the uh, least significant bit of the minimum value. So this works. Okay, why does it work? So we decide uh, that a value, uh, this random value, is, uh, is a common value if during the first phase it reaches f plus one correct processes. And due to intersection properties, we know that every common value will arrive at all correct processes during the second one. So actually what we're hoping for is that the, this global minimum value will be of a correct process, and it will become common, then uh, propagating through the system to all correct processes. Why uh, this works, we show in our paper that we can bound the number of common values, and then using probability, and as I said, we have this 4.5, we want this probability to be positive, that the, minimum, the global minimum is indeed a common value of a correct process. As I also said, we have this restriction on the adversary, that it is a delay adaptive adversary. So this uh, condition is necessary to, to make sure that this common value is being committed before the adversary sees the values. Okay, so once the adversary schedules the first round messages, it already decides who will be common before seeing those values. So uh, we do end up with a working algorithm. However, it is uh, not good for us because it's not subquadratic. This is two all to all communication phases. This is quadratic. So now we turn to the second use of ERF for committee sampling. So what we do, like Algorand did, uh, we, we use this uh, VRFs to sample algorithms. So we define this threshold, which is approximately log n over n. Every process will obtain a, random, a different random value, and it will know if it's, uh, this value is below the threshold or above it. If it's below the threshold, this process is elected to the committee and will participate in the algorithm in the way I'll show in a second. And if not, it remains silent. So now, instead of all to all communication phases, we have committed to all communication phases. So how does it help us? Every, uh, if you think about it, every process that is elected to a committee and it speaks, now the adversary can see, can recognize him and corrupt him. So we want to make sure that every process speaks only once and then uh, its job is done. And uh, committees are unpredictable. So this is exactly what we're going to do. 
we're going to have each step of the protocol being executed by a different committee, a different sample committees. committees. So in this, perp, in, the, in this drawing, the purple processes are the elected ones. If they are elected, they have a proof from the VRF. They are part of the committee, they speak, they show the proof, and their message uh, is being processed. However, if a Byzantine process wants to speak, wants to take over the protocol, it sends messages, however, it was not elected. It does not have this proof to provide to the processes, so it can send whatever you want, but his messages will be ignored. So now this is good. We have uh, N log N messages in this protocol, but I neglected something important, which is how many processes do we wait for? If you remember before that, we waited for N minus F. This is how we made progress. Now we cannot wait for N minus F messages because the committee size is somewhere around log N. We are not know exactly because everyone samples himself in a uniform way. We don't know how many people, people, processes, are elected to the committee, nor do you know how many good or bad guys in the committee. So for this, we define two parameters in our paper, W and B, where W represents the number of, pro of processes we can wait for, and B are the Byzantine in each committee. So what we're showing using turn of bounds is that in each committee, at least W processes will be honest, and at most B of them are Byzantine. So you can think of that. Now we can take any algorithm, asynchronous algorithm, replace N minus F with W, replace F plus one with B minus one, and hopefully it will work. But we do need some more uh, properties in order to, to provide quorum intersections and such properties. So uh, we show that each two subsets of size W will intersect by at least B plus one, meaning like the intersection of two N minus F sets. There is at least one correct processes in the intersection, and that every subset, every two subsets of size W and size B plus one will intersect by at least one. So now we can take our algorithm and just replace this N minus F with W, and hopefully everything will be okay. Hopefully, meaning with high probability, this turn of bounds will hold. So how do we take this uh, bit flip and make it uh, a consensus algorithm? We add an approver primitive. This is a new primitive. It's quite similar to Bracha, a reliable broadcast in a sense. But now instead of having one sender, we have all processes invoke this uh, approve method, starting with uh, some value, initial value vi of process i, and return with a set of values. And what are the, the properties of this primitive? We want validity. We want that if all processes start with the same initial value v, then they all return with the single tone of v itself. We want graded agreement, meaning that if two correct, different correct processes return with a single tone, it would be the same value. So v and w in the in slide. And for termination, we want all processes to return and return with a non-empty set. So I won't get into uh, great details, but this, uh, the main idea, first without committee sampling, is quite similar to Bracha. Every process starts with this initial value. It sends it to all other processes. Once a process hears f plus one uh, copies of the same value v, it sends echo message boosting the presence of v in the system. Then if I heard n minus f, uh, echoes of the same value, I'll send an OK message along with, uh, with the signatures. And finally, I return the set of the first, uh, of the values in the first N minus F messages. Okay, so this supposedly sounds a bit familiar if you know uh, Bach algorithm. And now I want to turn into committee sampling, so it's supposed to be easy, right? I'll take the F plus one, I'll replace it with B plus one, and the N minus F I'll replace with W but we're doing counter plural. And the problem is that in the echo phase, processes may have to echo more than one value. It can hear, for example, f plus one zeros and then f plus one ones. And as I said, we want each process to speak only once. So how, how do we solve it? So what I forgot to tell you earlier 
is that we assume that the prover is invoked only with two uh, different values. It could be any two values, but there are at most two of them. And in this case, what we can do is we take the second phase committee and split it into two committees. So now, as an input to the VRF, instead of just uh, asking whether I am part of committee number two or not, I also give the, the value as an input, forming two different committees that are independent of each other. And as I said, replacing the f plus one and n minus f with the relevant parameter. And this results in a word complexity of n log to the power of two n. The power of two comes from the signatures being propagated in the last phase. So now we have uh, a prover primitive and a shared coin, which we described uh, in details. And we can take them and plug them in into a consensus algorithm. So our algorithm uh, is based on Mustafa et al algorithm, and it's quite standard. We have these uh, rounds that uh, keeps going on, and each round, all processes are trying to converge on some value. If somehow they all started with the same value, this is great. They'll call the approver. Let me just mark it. They'll call the approver. They return with a singleton. They don't have to, to use any coin flip, and they will converge. Otherwise, since we have graded agreement, we know that they are not too far from each other, and using the, the coin, they can... Uh, agree to go there on a value, because we do have the, the positive probability of the shared coin success rate, we know that it will converge in a constant uh, number of rounds in, expect in expectation. And uh, as you can see, beside the marked uh, scenarios, everything is local computation. All the communication is being done through the approver and the shared coin, which is great because we already showed that they uh, Word complexity is at most n log to the power of 2n. And we do have this uh, subquadratic algorithm. So just to summarize, what we do is we present the first formalization of committee sampling in an asynchronous uh, settings. Using this technique, we solve the first subquadratic Byzantine agreement and uh, shared coin. Everything is being done with high probability. It has a com word complexity of O tilde of n and ex constant expected time. However, we do have some limitations. So we can solve only binary consensus. We did not manage to make it a uh, multi-valued consensus. We provide safety and liveness only with high probability, meaning in the worst case, maybe I sample a committee, everyone will be bad, nothing will work, uh, including safety. And all the guarantees are only for one-shot algorithm. We cannot take this algorithm and construct it into a state machine replication. If you remember, all the probabilities are with high probability. If you put them on top of each other, it will no longer uh, hold. Finally, we have non-optimal resilience uh, because of the probability equations. This was already solved a uh, few months after our work was published uh, by Bloom et al. So this is... Uh, in its optimal state now. But everything else, you can go ahead and uh, solve it yourself. Okay, that's it. Questions, please. So, so uh, because you're using uh, turn off, doesn't it mean that we need slightly more than n uh, like two thirds n for the consensus? Yeah, so we. I didn't get into all the details. We do have. Yeah, the question was uh, because we use Chernoff, if, if we can take exactly log n, or don't we need some spares? So we do, and uh, I didn't tell you exactly what are the definition of W and BR, but there are some constants. There are some epsilons hiding there. So yeah. Is that kind of the weakest possible? Or? So uh, we are familiar with your result of the no after the fact removal, and we think it's kind of uh, 
the same. The work of Erika Bloom and Al that, were, that improved the resilience, they have a weaker, weaker or stronger uh, adversary. They don't have this uh, delay adaptive uh, restriction. Instead, they use this uh, atomic erasure keys after every measure. So it's a trade-off. 